Today I'm gonna to answer some of the questions you guys have from uh, YouTube. Okay, so today we're gonna to do some Q&A and I'm gonna go through some of the comments and see uh, what questions you guys have. So the first question I'm gonna go through, looks like the error is current selection does not contain any column. And so you're saying the grid edit checkbox um, edit, copy, and delete features are not available. So what does this mean? Let me pull up SQL here. So I'm jumping over here to the SQL Train Online Simple DB and I have a join. Now if we look at your error message, let's uh, put that down here. Your error message says current selection does not contain a unique column. The grid edit checkbox edit copy delete features are not available. Well, there isn't any edit features in the query table. So there, there isn't any edit here. So I'm guessing you're in a different place. So let's go figure out where you're at. I think where you're at right now is if I go here and I go to edit the top 200 rows, you get a different box. Now in this box, you can edit stuff. You can add a new row. You can come in here and I can edit things. Um, but you can also show SQL. Let me see if it's right here. And then you can start writing SQL. So if we took that SQL join and we put it over here and I run it. Can I run it from here? Execute SQL. So now down here it says cell is read only. And so you can't actually edit these. Um, can I put in a new one? No, see, I, the new rows are gone. So we've gone to edit only mode, uh, or read only mode, I'm sorry. So I'm not sure if this was the question you had, but um, unless I know a little more, this is kind of what I'm thinking here is, uh, you might be in the wrong query editor. And so you don't want to start your query by going here and going to edit. You actually, the way I usually do it is I click on the table I care about or the database and I go up here to new query. And that gives you a, a more full featured query editor. Because you can see here um, on these query editors you have the highlighting of your syntax. Um, on this one you have nothing. And so this is the edit area but um, I don't use that very often. So hopefully that answers your question. Um, let's see what other questions we got. So we've got a normalization question here. So this is from the database normalization, first, second, third, and fourth normal forms. And uh, Rich, you have a question. Uh, let's see, this video tied up some loose ends. And then he, Rich, you said, um, wouldn't it be a good idea to put the product manufacturer address into its own table in case the product is manufactured in multiple locations? Okay, so let's see what we're talking about here. I need to get down farther in here where we get fully normalized. And then we have product manufacturer. And then down here we have the product manufacturer with this address. Okay, so we're talking about just this project product manufacturer table at the bottom here. And yes, if really whenever you're normalizing, you need to think about the business use case. In this case, um, if there's only ever going to be one manufacturer address uh, per manufacturer, then this is fine. But if you do find out that, yeah, a manufacturer can have multiple locations where they manufacture from, and, and most likely you'd want to track that, um, then yes, you'd want to separate that out uh, uh, per manufacturer. So you put the address out there by itself. Um, and a lot of times you may want to track something like uh, the batch that you're, uh, was produced, you'll want to track that and, uh, and you'll want to know where, what location it came from and everything, um, especially if you had some kind of uh, perishable food or something that, that could possibly um, go bad. Or you, you know, sometimes you have recalls and so you need to know which batches came from which locations that had the recall. So yeah, nope, good point. Um, all these can probably be broken down depending on um, what the use case is. It all, it's always driven by the business case. Um, you can you can over normalize something that may never happen, 
And so that's just something to be careful of. Um, but if the business says, yeah, our manufacturers do have multiple locations, then you'd absolutely separate that out. Good question. So what do we have next? Um, so this is in the Excel to SQL part two, where we're using the import export wizard. And it says, which version of SQL Server are you using? Because I'm using Office 2016 and SQL version 18. And I have some problem to import data. An example, I have 32,992 rows of data in text. But in SQL, I just see 84. So usually that is a problem with um, the data itself. So if you have text data, that means it's delimited. And so you may have an extra carriage return in there somewhere, or you may actually have a, um, some kind of new line or end of file character hanging around. Once it hits that, it'll stop importing. Another issue that you, and, and so I always use Notepad++ pad plus plus, and you can go into Notepad++, plus plus, maybe look for special characters and stuff like that. Um, but uh, there could be an issue too with the import export wizard. Um, so let's just open that thing up real quick. Um, oops, if I come in here and uh, let's go with task, import data. I open on the wrong screen, here we go. Um, the one thing you wanna wanna look at is possibly what driver you're using. Um, so if we're getting it from a flat file source, or from Excel. I guess if you're getting it from a flat file source, there's not much there. Um, now it's just defining your column. So if you said you had a text file, it's gonna be tab delimited or something. So, gosh, um, I'd, I'd most likely look for um, some kind of weird character in your data that's causing it to terminate. Um, you can always take your file, chunk it down into a smaller size, see if it loads. And if it does, um, do it again with um, another you know, 10,000 rows. That's how I troubleshoot sometimes is I'll have to cut the file in half and then run it that way and see if it loads. And if it does, the issue is later in the file. Um, you can try those type of things. Um, most likely it's a bad character, end of line character, a bad tab character. Maybe a, if you have it double quoted or something on your file, um, you don't have an end quote. And so it just tries to suck up the rest of that. Um, rest of that file as one cell. So those could be some of the problems uh, that you might look at. Uh, oh, so this question here, we're sitting in the Learn Basic SQL for Beginners, and it says, is this video enough to get a job as an analyst, such as a business analyst? There's probably a lot of skills you need as a business analyst. Um, this is enough for you to understand SQL and understand what what it's all about, um, but to actually if you have to actually pull data, it's going to take a little time to um, do it on your own. Uh, you need some practice and stuff. Um, but a business analyst um, is going to also need to understand business, and that's a really big part of this. So I would say that you should work. Um, uh, work on getting some of that business knowledge, whether it's accounting, whether it's, um, you know, human resources, whatever business you're going to work in, um, under, start understanding a little more about business. It never hurts to know more about business. Um, is this video enough? Um, probably not enough. Uh, it might get you in the door because you can, after this video, you can speak some intel intelligently about SQL. Um, so that might be enough. Um, but it's going to be more about your people skills and being able to analyze uh, business processes and things like that. Uh, thanks for the question. Um, let's see what we have next. So uh, Ryan, I have a question about updating the date format. I'm using Toad and all my tables I'm pulling in. I did not create them. Um, so I need to change the date format for birth date. It's coming out as uh, the certain format and I need to come out without the timestamp basically um, There's a lot of different ways to do that. Um, you could use the format function from this video uh, The question is when you say you need to come out Do you need to come out that way in toad or do you have another program that so you're writing a sequel and the, the, the program's going to pull it out? 
one of the things that you're going to run into is, is the different tools will display dates in their own way. Um, so Toad may have a default way of displaying this date. So it may be as simple as going into some Toad settings and saying, hey, change the way that the dates display um, if you're just trying to make it display in Toad. Um, you can also use the format function that is in this video. Um, that format function uh, will allow you to uh, change how it's displayed. Um, you can convert it. So in this case, it looks like you're trying to get rid of the timestamp. You could just cast it as a date and, and it will come out as just a date. There's no time portion of it, so it should display a little better. Um, you can also convert it to an actual uh, string. Let me show you that real quick. Let me get out of that editor and let's close that up. I don't need that anymore. Um, so if I just do a select get date, um, you can see I've got a time on here. If I don't like that format, I can actually do a convert. And the target type, I can actually ver convert to a varchar. Um, and then uh, you got the get date, which is the actual um, the actual value we want to get in there. You would put your column in here, by the way, because um, your column's got multiple dates and stuff. Um, I'm just using a single get date function here. Um, and then there's different styles. I don't remember these styles offhand. We'll try one and see what we got. So this is style 110. Um, and so you can see that it was uh, MM, DD, Y, 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 Y. So let's try 112. And I guessed right, and that, that is your, your uh, format. Now you could, you could easily go in, um, not easily. Let me open one of these up here for you real quick. Um, if we go with uh, T-SQL, which is SQL Server's uh, conversion, and do a convert, we should get the Microsoft site up. And somewhere in the middle of this site has all of these. So I used 112 right here. It's the ISO, which is what you're using. If we use 12, we only get two days. Um, so let me see if I can get back to the question. No, I don't need your question. I need this thing here. If I just use 12, you're going to see that the years disappear, or the four-digit year, you get a two-digit year. So you just have to read, uh, you just have to go through the site and look at these columns here. Without century, with century, and you just kind of go down and figure out what input outputs you want. Um, so the default has the timestamp it says, or we could, if I went 109, you're gonna get the same thing. Um, so let's go like, let's try that one, 109. This is the one you don't want. I'm not sure I ever use that one. So anyways, um, you can convert it uh, in the same way you can take that get date. Um, right now it's a date and time. If you're in the newest, newer versions of SQL Server, you can just um, cast one of these as a date. And you've lost, you got rid of the um, time portion of it. So it could be any of those things. It could be Toad displaying it, look for some settings there. It could be that you need to convert it. You can use the formatting thing also. It depends on how you want to use that, but those are some options there. So thank you for that question. All right, do we have the question in here? Okay, what are you guys typing in for server name? So this is a connection issue. So how do we connect to our, our server? So once you have, um, let's just get here, I'm gonna get rid of that. I'm gonna disconnect um, with this one. Okay, so I'm not connected. I opened up Management Studio. How do we connect? So we come in database engine, but what do we put in here? Um, and there's different things you can put in here. Uh, Joey desktop, that's just my computer that I'm on right now. Um, or localhost should route you um, right back to the same thing. So that gives me that with all my databases. Um, let me disconnect that. Uh, you can use dot. That's just the same as localhost. And that routed me to the same place, same databases, same server, everything. Um, here, let me see if I can connect multiple times. I can. These are all, it's the same, same server, but... And then I can use Joey Desktop. And so, really, 
is going to be your server. You could also go in um, to your services. Let me pull that up here. Okay, so we got the services up. If I sort, I should see some SQL Server services in here. And if, if you didn't install a name service, all the things I showed you should work. If you have a name service, it, the name will show up in here too. Uh, not, not name service, a named instance. So that could be there. Um, so you'd have to try that out. So there's a tool, SQL Server Configuration Manager. Let me pull that over. This tool here shows you all this, the services that you have um, installed. And so SQL Server services. Um, right now I have a SQL Server, SQL Server browser, which is just a something that routes your connections to the SQL Server. You need that if you have a named instance. And then we have an agent, which allows you to um, schedule things or whatever. Uh, but if I go in here, let's see what properties we've got. That's the account. Let's see what the service is. MS SQL Server. I don't see anything here. If it's if you only have one thing installed, it's going to be the local, the non-named. It's just going to you just type in localhost or dot or the name of your computer, and it should get you in. So try that out. See if that helps you out. Let me close those up. The moving average one for last here. So this this question here. Um, let's see, Joey, can you please tell? Tell for 90 day moving average, how to calculate it. So how do we calculate a 90 day moving average? Um, so this is the moving average with windowing video. And so this is where we ended up at the end of the video here. And we have uh, select the invoice date key. So then we, you can see the date coming down here. Um, and then we're taking an average of the profit and we're doing it over. So these are just all windowing clauses. You might want to watch the video to kind of understand those more. We're ordering by the invoice date key. And then we have the rows between five preceding and the current row. So this here that's on the screen is a five day rolling average or five day moving average or whatever you want to call it. Um, all you have to do, change that five that I'm on right, right there and uh, change that to, you just have to get it right. You have to test it and everything. But, um, you want, what, a 90 day? Change that to 90 and I think it'll give you that. It's either change it to 90, change it to 89, or change it to 91. I can't remember the exact calc there. Um, you'll want to test it and see which one works for you. But if you change that five to like a 90, you should be good to go. Um, so those are all the questions I was gonna to cover today. Um, send me more questions in the comments and things and uh, I'll try to cover them in future videos. Uh, and thank you for all the good questions.